Okay, I have a Medico biaxial uh, mortise cylinder here that uh, Georgia Jim sent me. Um, I think he sent me six locks to get through. Let me see, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And so this is the second one. Um, and I just did the Medico M3, so this is the, I think, the little bit uh, older generation, but newer than the Classic. Uh, basically, the step up from the Classic it seems to be that it has um, some serrations on the rotation of the pins and uh, introduces, I think, a uh, mushroom pin, um, which I don't believe the Classics had. I'd have to go look at those again. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Medico, this cylinder actually has six uh, pin, um, I don't know, the holes, what do you call holes? But it has six holes for the pins, but it, only five of them are populated. That's just how I got it. I'm guessing that's how they come and you need to lift these up to the shear line and rotate them. One thing is that um, if, you wrote, if you tension clockwise, you engage the sidebar first and can work on the rotation and then the lifting. And if you do counterclockwise, you can do the lifting and then work on the rotation. Um, depending on how this goes, you might see me do the rotation to the right and then go left for the lift. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll go, everybody says counterclockwise is easier, so I'll go clockwise. And that means that we're going to start with the rotation. Um, so what I'm going to do is to look for a binder. I'm going to put tension, and then I'm going to uh, actually what I should do first is rake this. Or well, what I should do first, I have the key for this. Uh, unlike uh, unlike the um, M3, I'll start with uh, the key, and there it goes the key. And then without the key, we're locked. And then what we'll do is we'll reset the rotation. Even though when, as you pull the key out, you should be resetting everything to that last bit or maybe the slide off to be centered. Um, I don't know. But you can reset the rotation by raking it a little. And then we'll give it a little bit of clockwise tension. And um, we'll feel for a binder. So that first one is bouncy. Second one feels like it's uh, binding. So we'll go ahead and try to rotate it until now it feels bouncy. Third one feels like it's binding. So we'll go ahead and try to rotate that. We'll try. Oh, that one feels like it's backwards. Um, during the gut, I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, those seem bouncy now. Fourth one, it feels like it's binding. Uh, feels bouncy now. And the fifth one is definitely binding feels bouncy now. So now that I get all the rotation set, I could pick it, but let's go ahead and go counterclockwise for going to the shear line, why not? Um, this might allow the pins to rotate while I'm lifting them, so it could be detrimental, but it's more fun, right? Uh, I think this is number two. Got to click there. Might have been one. I didn't feel number one, so. Four. Click there, five I think, click there, yep, so it was right two, and then four and five, uh, one, click there, two we set, so let's try three, click there and we're open. Okay, so um, not much to this, we'll go ahead and uh, gut it, turn on the autofocus, um, I, I showed some of my non-picking buddies yesterday one of my videos and they're complaining about the lighting so I added a bit of lights hopefully that helps um, move that out there actually that's gonna this is this light is stealing the uh, focus isn't it and that might be stealing focus too so let's throw that over there come on focus on me oh yeah I got center focus set okay let's get a Mat here, and I'll take off the screws here at the back. Oh, <laughs> lock it up, I guess is a good idea. There's, one of those. there's two screws back here, Phillips head, and there's like a um, there's this plate to hold them in, and then an actuator. 
since we have the key, we can do it this way. Uh, the sidebar is on the right, so let me go ahead and turn it to the right. Get a follower here. Push that out. Remember to catch the sidebar as it comes out. Actually, I think the sidebar in, in these uh, biaxials stays in pretty well. Yeah, it stays in pretty well. Um, we'll go ahead and remove pins first because that stays in pretty well. There's five, four, and six was unpopulated. Three, two, Started well, ended well, didn't do well in the middle. And pin one, there's the, uh, there's those. Uh, sidebar, might be a little bit trickier to take out. I need like a big pair of tweezers to grab the length, because if you get one side out, then the other side is uh, going to be jammed in by a the angle. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's not the last piece. There's two little springs on this sidebar. One, and then this one, two. And you can see the sidebar has these little fingers. There's six of them, but only five of them were being used. Um, and those little fingers poke into uh, these slots that are on the pins. So you can see this pin here has this slot down, let me show the top of the pin, that's the easiest way. You can see it has this slot down the side hopefully, and that sidebar pin has to go in there. There's also this little nub on the opposite side of that slot, and that nub goes into this little channel in the cylinder here, um, and this channel uh, restricts how far that pin can rotate. Um, because if the pin somehow ended up 180 backwards, when the um, the key would on, the key would only be able to rotate it, you know, about about 180 or less, um, and it and it would never get to the correct side. It would never be able to flip this pin 180. So they need to restrict the uh, amount that rotates. In addition, hopefully you can see on this, there's a little, I guess serration or false gate. I guess serration here, and that's to stop you from being able to pick it and rotate it into position. But I didn't even feel any of those. Um, because I completely let off tension to rotate. Uh, so unless it's like a false gate, you're not going to feel it. Uh, because I don't try to rotate under tension, the serration's not going to do anything. Alright, let's go look at the Bible. Um, so in here, I think pin one's a mushroom, so we want to pay attention to the way this one comes out. And we can see the mushroom there is in the proper orientation for those that care. Um, It'd be silly to have it backwards. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't really add anything uh, to the pick. Um, I felt it briefly, but just kind of like pushed right through it. So it did. It did present a little bit of feeling. A lot of times they don't present any feeling at all. Like they're in such a position that they're already past the mushroom area when they're in the uh, when they're in the plug. All right. And then the springs. The springs are all the s same in this one. So. On the back, so we had some different springs. Okay, and there's a little half moon came out. That's a drill a steel drill protection at the front of the um, of the core. There's one more in there. A little bit stubborn. Maybe he got munched a little before some at some point. There we go. And there's one more. There's one more half moon of drill protection there. I'm not going to take it out. But let's go ahead and this up a little for presentation. Uh, check the core, uh, the plug. Okay, unlike the biaxial, there's no serrations on this on this uh, plug here. The core has nothing special. And then here's the pins. You can see the little gates on those. There's different lengths of. Um, driver pins. I can see for the longer key pins, the driver pins are shorter, so they might be uh, matching height. I think that's for um, uh, bump protection. Also to put the same amount of, I guess, pressure on each spring, perhaps. Um, yeah, so that's the Medico biaxial. Thanks.